What's up guys, Redis Rations here with you again. And we're gonna be checking out an ultra unique ration today. It comes packaged in an ammo can. This is the History Saver 1941 Preserving History Ration. There were only two of these ever made and I was lucky enough to win this one. Fellow YouTuber and ration reviewer, History Saver 1941 had a giveaway on his channel in celebration of reaching 1,000 subscribers. And I just so happened to win that contest. This custom made ration was one of those prizes. I want to say a big thank you to History Saver for sending this over to me and for having the contest. His channel covers all kinds of topics with an emphasis on military history. And of course, he does some ration reviews of his own. You can check his channel out, linked down in the description of this video. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like seeing these ration reviews on YouTube and to subscribe to my channel to catch all my future videos. Now without further delay, let's get this on over to the desk so we can check it out. So here is our History Saver 1941 Preserving History Ration packed in a 30 caliber ammo can that's been painted black. Let's see what's included. Looks like it's a canned ration. We have a B unit that was packed for Minotaur Trading Company. The B unit is a throwback to the old Mill Combat individual B unit. It is a canned ration unit that contains bread items, an emery spoon, a very thoughtful toothbrush, a can opener to be able to dig into these cans, a C unit can, which is like an accessory kit, and lastly, our main entree, chicken and rice and sauce. These were all packaged March 2nd of this year, so extremely fresh. History Saver chose the items that went into this ration. This ration was packaged by Minotaur Trading Company for History Saver. And so most of the individual components that this ration contains are available from Minotaur Trading Company. I've never had the opportunity to review something quite so exclusive. They actually included two little can openers. They look like P38 style can openers, not the larger P51. Now let's open up this B unit first. This can opener is nice and sharp. That is very much appreciated. That actually opened up very easily. I opened it from the bottom as to not destroy the aesthetics of the can. So these items are going to be falling out in sort of an odd order. It looks like we have some rich tea biscuits. Six total biscuits, two of which are pretty crumbled up but the rest are in good shape. Good bit of crumbs floating around in there. And we have two one ounce packages of cream cheese icing. And that was separated by a little paper divider. Next, we'll take a look at that C unit, opening it from the bottom once again. I love the acoustics of opening cans with these little manual can openers. As you get closer to the end, the sound signature gets deeper and deeper until the can pops. That thing is packed full of stuff. We have a two pack of Biscoff biscuits, a 32 count pack of diamond brand matches with green tips, a sodium free beef bouillon package, two 100% pure black tea, Irish breakfast tea bags, two Nescafe Taster Choice house blend freeze dried coffees, some fresh mint brand toothpaste for our toothbrush, copious amounts of sugar bags, looks like seven in total, three non-dairy coffee creamers, a piece of bazooka bubble gum, two fruit lifesavers, a moist towelette, two water purification tablets with instructions, that's a nice little inclusion, and two tiny packages of iodized salt. That does it for the C unit. Now let's take a look at our chicken and rice. It's very white looking. One desiccant pack, do not eat and a second desiccant back, which we will not eat. There doesn't appear to be any spices or seasonings in this really, other than some type of white powder, probably chicken bouillon of some sort, I would assume. Get a little bite of that white meat chicken there and give that a taste. Decently tasty freeze dried chicken. I think this is gonna end up being in some kind of cream sauce, but I guess we won't know until we rehydrate it. I need to get some water on to boil for our drinks and our main. While I'm doing that, let's get everything plated up. Our chicken and rice main calls for 10 ounces of hot water, and it says that it takes 10 to 12 minutes to rehydrate. Give that a quick stir. There are a couple little green flakes of herb picking through now that I've added water to it. Maybe there are some herbs in it after all. History Savers certainly put together an interesting ration. It's a mix of components that I haven't really seen in any other rations. Plenty of hot drinks, but no cold drinks. So let's get a couple of those hot drinks going. I think we'll go for this Irish breakfast tea bag first. That's Twinnings brand of London. Smells nice and fragrant out of the bag. 
instant color change. We'll do one of our two Taste for Choice coffees as well. And should you desire, you could double up on these and have one really powerful cup of coffee, but I'm only feeling like one at the moment. Large freeze-dried crystals in our Taster's Choice house blend. I will be adding a pack of creamer to that because I like my coffee sweet and creamy. And to reach our desired sweetness, of course, we're putting a sugar bag in there. These instant coffees are not super powerful, so you want to go a little bit light on the water. I'd probably put about six ounces in this, and that's what I would go for on the high end. Lastly, we do have our package of sodium-free beef bouillon. It states in the back that one of these packages is equivalent to one bouillon cube, and that it should be reconstituted in one cup of hot water. Powder is actually not as brown as you would think. It's kind of lightly colored. Let's give that a little bit of a taste. Dry. Whoa! Even being sodium-free, that's still fairly salty. It has a nice, deep beef flavor. There's some onion in this as well. I bet this would be really great mixed into the chicken and rice, but I want to try it on its own as well. So I'm going to reserve just a little bit of dry powder in that package, and I'm going to add about four ounces of water to this. I'm going to give the rice a quick stir to check our consistency. Still seems to be quite a bit of liquid in there, but things are thickening up a little bit. Let's try out one of these round, rich tea biscuits. Really nice snap on that. These are super light and airy and crispy. They smell like a very light graham cracker. We'll see how they taste. Super crisp and airy. They have a nice level of sweetness, but very neutral in flavor. Dry my mouth out just a little bit, so I think that calls for a sip of coffee. I might have went a little heavy on the water. This really doesn't have that pungent, robust taste. It is slightly bitter, though. I think one of these biscuits would be very nice soaked in a bit of this coffee to add some extra sweetness to the coffee. For sure. The texture is no longer crunchy. It's just straight mushy after just a moment's dip in that coffee. But the sweetness of the biscuit complements the coffee very well. That's really nice. That Taster Choice House Blend is not a very impressive cup, but I'll even take mediocre coffee over no coffee any day. It was good enough to finish off. The main still needs a little more time, so I suppose we'll check out our cream cheese icing while we wait. I haven't had this in a while. I remember it having a bit of a chemical flavor, off-white cream color, super sweet, with a little bit of an artificial chemical bite. I think it'll be decently good on one of these biscuits, though. So let's give that a taste. Oh yeah, it's not bad at all. Sweet on sweet. The creamy icing is a nice complement to the crunchy biscuit. I feel like there's a recipe you could do with one of these packs of icing, one of these packs of coffee, and one of those biscuits, but I won't be doing that in this video. Let's give one of our two Biscoffs a taste. Lotus branding on that. Very easy, soft crack. Those are very crisp and aromatic. Super fresh, sweet, really good. I think I like these Biscoffs more than the tea biscuits, but both are pretty good. Put a little bit of our icing on that. That should be quite nice. Pretty pleasant indeed. Wash that down with a sip of Irish breakfast tea. That's a really nice cup. Much lighter than I thought it would be being a black tea. I would prefer mine with a little bit of sugar. Even before adding sugar to it, the bitterness level on this tea was very low. It has a little bit of that tannic astringent mouthfeel, but it's not particularly bitter. It's light and pretty refreshing, even though it's hot tea. I think we've finally given our chicken and rice long enough. It has thickened up very well. Let's get it out on the tray here. It turned into quite the nice portion size. This looks a lot like a dish I'm very familiar with. Southern style chicken and rice. History saver is a Southern boy too. Of course, I'm from Georgia. He lives over in Alabama. So he's my next door neighbor. Let's take a good up close look at this. So there's very little chicken in it, but there are some chicken chunks distributed throughout. Most are quite small. It's very white in color. The sauce that's on it appears to be a white cream style sauce. There may be some white cheese in this, but I'm not getting very much cheesy aroma. And there are very few little flakes there of green herb, most likely parsley. It smells very basic. It's not particularly fragrant. I'm expecting this to have a very neutral, hearty flavor. I am a fan of the portion size though. Let's go in for a big spoonful of this. Get a little chicken, plenty of that rice. And let's see how it tastes. It rehydrated perfectly. The rice has no crunchiness whatsoever left in it. It's fluffy and soft. It has a chicken bouillon flavor and that sauce is not cheesy. It's a cream sauce. So it's a little bit 
on the milky side. Let's try just a bite of chicken. The chicken softened up nicely, but it's a little bit dry. Perhaps it was overcooked a little bit before freeze drying. This is a really perfect base for other flavors. If I had a little bit of black pepper, it would certainly go on this. I do think it can use a little bit of the included salt. That might pick it up just a little bit. And of course, I'm a huge hot sauce fan. So if I had a little hot sauce, it would be going on this. Let's try it with the salt right quick. A little added sodium sharpens things up a little bit, but it's still a very neutral tasting dish. It, not necessarily in a bad way. Sometimes you just want something that's comforting and easy to eat. It's not bad by any means. It just has a little bit of that cafeteria style food filling to it, which would end up being really good field chow in my opinion. There's enough of it to fill you up, that's for sure. Let's try a little sip of our sodium-free beef bouillon. That's pretty good. Now that it has the water in it, I can certainly tell that this is not as salty as your regular beef bouillon would be. It has a very strong onion flavor. Now I think it would actually mix pretty good with our rice here, but instead of pouring this in the rice, I'm actually gonna add the rice and chicken to the bouillon, give that a little stir, and although this is not pretty, I have made a chicken and rice soup, which I expect to be pretty good. Let's give it a taste. Mm -hmm. The added onion, of the beef broth complements the chicken and rice very well. Chicken and rice soup is a classic, and that's essentially what this tastes like. Maybe if it was chicken bouillon instead of beef bouillon, it would match up a little bit better. This is pretty dang good the way it is. Finish that one off fairly easily. I did want to try just a little bit of this dry bouillon powder directly on the chicken and rice, sort of as a seasoning. That's a lot on one bite, but that should add some serious flavor. Let's see how that is. Oh yeah, that's the best yet. To really make this main as good as it should have been, I should have just added this to it as a seasoning packet from the very beginning. It's almost like putting the pack of ramen noodle seasoning on your ramen noodles. The salt level seems just perfect, and that packet adds a depth of flavor that this menu didn't have beforehand. It was a smart move adding this to the ration because it really made the main worlds better in my opinion. I always finish my rations off, but I rarely do it on camera. So you know, this must have been pretty decent if I'm doing so this time. It's pretty hard to mess up chicken and rice though. We'll take a look at this bazooka bubble gum. I tore the package a little bit and that's unfortunate because bazooka is famous for having their little comics included in the wrapper. You can pause that to check out that Bazooka Joe story if you'd like to. I'm more concerned with the gum. I have not had a brick of bazooka gum in probably 15 or 20 years. That's a flavor you never forget. Artificial bubble gum. Sweet, super chewy, starts off hard, but then softens up fairly well. To be honest, I didn't know they were still making this stuff. I will try out one of our lifesavers. From History Saver comes a lifesaver. Let's see what flavor this one is. That was pineapple or maybe pina colada. I'm gonna say pineapple. Sweet and chewy. I think you're just supposed to suck on these, but I can never help myself. I always have the compulsion to chew. I guess we'll finish off this meal by giving my teeth a good cleaning. I'm gonna use the inside of this B unit can as my water vessel. Give that toothbrush a good little dip and we'll squeeze on some of our fresh mint toothpaste. It's a very clear gel toothpaste. Put on a generous amount. Let's give that a shot. That's lathering up very nicely. This has a very light mint flavor. It's not overpowering. If this ration was used out in the field, that toothbrush would be a super welcome item. It's the perfect way to freshen up after downing all that sugar of the icing and the drinks. And I think that was the review. History Saver 1941 Preserving History Ration. A very exclusive item in which I was very lucky to be able to review. I wanna say a huge thank you to History Saver for sending this to me hosting his contest that I won. I want to congratulate him once again on reaching the 1,000 subscriber milestone. Awesome job, buddy. Again, his channel will be linked down in the description of this video if you want to check that out. He does so many different things. His is a hard channel to describe, but I can guarantee you if you are a lover of military history that you will enjoy his content. If you do check his channel out, let him know. Redness Ration sent you over there. Thanks for the fantastic meal, buddy. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up to help it out with the Google algorithm. Subscribe to the channel to see all my future ration review videos. And let me know what you thought about this ration in this video down in the comments. Even though this particular ration is not available for sale anywhere, if any of these particular items were of interest to you, I'm sure you can find them on the Minotaur Trading Company website. And I will catch you guys in the next video. See you then. Peace.